Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to be looking at a topic which is very frequently asked in exams and it's also a topic that I know many students struggle with um, just in terms of understanding what the question is asking and it's you could title it as conditional statements in functions and you're probably familiar with the question where it says for which values of x is f of x greater than naught, smaller than naught, f of x greater than g of x, f of x is decreasing, f of x times g of x is smaller than naught. These are questions that you might have been exposed to in past exam papers. And in, in the exam, the memo, they just give you the answer, but they don't always explain to you how to get to the answer and how to think about questions like this and just to make sense of what the question is asking. And that's basically what I'm going to be doing in this video to give you an approach to these types of questions. So before we can answer, we have to understand the question. So it says, for which values of x is f of x greater than zero? So when they say for which values of x, they're talking about the x-axis. So we're talking about the domain of the graph, right? Domain is the x values. So they're saying for which values of x is f of x greater than zero? And f of x in this context is going to be the parabola, okay? It's the parabola. So, And when they say f of x, what they're actually referring to is the y value. That's very important. When they say f of x, that's the y value of the parabola. Okay? So when they say for which values of x is the f of x greater than 0, they're essentially asking you where is the y value of my parabola greater than 0? At what value of x is the y value of my parabola greater than 0? And the way to easily answer this is just to put your finger on the x-axis. So this is what I always do. I always do this with every single type of question like this. I just put my finger along the x-axis and I move it along the x-axis and I see, is this condition true? So if I put my finger over here at about 4, what's the y-value of the graph? It's negative. It's sort of somewhere down there. So therefore that condition is not true. But if I move my finger towards the left, there's a point where the graph is zero, the y value is zero. And then to the left of this point, which is two, you see the parabola starts to become positive. Okay, The y value is positive, f of x is positive. So therefore we can say that when, you know, when x is less than two, this condition is met. Okay. And it's, it's met all the way until x is minus 3. Because at minus 3, you can see that the value of f of x is 0, right? And then to the left of minus 3, we can see that the f of x, the y value of the parabola, is below the x-axis. It's negative. So therefore, the statement is not true when x is less than minus 3. It's only true when x is greater than minus 3 and smaller than 2. Okay. If I were to ask you what are the values of x where f of x is smaller than 0, well, then you would say, okay, again, finger on the x-axis, and you could see here that it's just the opposite, right? So when x is greater than 2, you can see when x is greater than 2, or, and this goes to infinity, right? All the way to infinity. When x is greater than 2, you can see that the y value, or f of x, which is the y value of the parabola, is smaller than 0. Or when x is less than minus 3. Okay, you can see that there. And this goes all the way to negative infinity. So you're getting the idea. Let's look at another type of question which says f of x is greater than g of x. Now g of x is just the straight line graph. You can see this is a straight line graph. It's a positive gradient straight line graph. And they are asking you where is f of x greater than g of x. Now remember, what did I say f of x represents? f of x is just the y value of the parabola. And g of x is just the y value of the straight line graph. So if I put my finger along the x-axis, just like I told you, you put your finger on the x-axis and you say, okay, at this particular x value, is the parabola's y value greater than the straight line graph's y value? And at this x value, it's not the straight line is above the parabola. But as I move towards the left, what you'll notice is that they start becoming closer and closer and closer together, where at B, they're equal to each other. The Y values are equal. So therefore, they're equal to each other at B. But then when I move to the left of B, what do you notice? The Y value of the 
parabola is greater than the y value of the straight line graph. Therefore, this condition is true. And this is true all the way, all the way at naught, at minus 1, at minus 2, it's true, at minus 3, it's true all the way until a. Because at a, that's when they, they equal each other. And then to the left of a, you see that the y value of the parabola, it's say at minus 4, is smaller than the y value of the straight line graph. So that condition is no longer true. So we can see from this graph that this condition is true, f of x is greater than g of x, when x is between a and b. Okay, when x is between a and b. Okay, and that's just your answer, that's your answer. So whenever I choose an x value that is between a and b, f of x is greater than g of x. That's what these questions mean. The next type of question could be, what, what values of x is f of x or the y, you know, f of x, which is the, the straight line, which is the parabola, decreasing. So when we say decreasing, the definition of a decreasing function, so you get increasing and decreasing functions. Increasing functions is when the graph becomes bigger as you move from left to right. It increases, okay? So you can see with this straight line graph, we would say it's an increasing function because, as, because the gradient's positive. So as you move from left to right, the graph is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. But with this parabola, you can see that it's, it's got a funny shape, right? It's, it's, at one part, it's becoming bigger, and the other part, it's becoming smaller. So they're asking you for which values of x is the, the f graph decreasing, becoming smaller. And you can see that happens at t. So after t, as we go from t towards the positive x-axis, that's where the graph becomes decreasing. Okay, because to the left of t, this region over here, the graph is increasing as we move from left to right. But as we go beyond t towards the right, the graph is decreasing from left to right. So therefore, the answer would be x must be greater than t. Whenever I choose a value of x that is greater than t, f of x will be decreasing. Okay, and the final type of question, which is really interesting, it says f of x times g of x, okay, and remember we said f of x is just the y value of the parabola, and g of x is the y value of the straight line graph, where are, where is the product of those values smaller than zero? And the way to answer these types of questions is to realize that when you take any two numbers and you multiply them, and if you want those answers to be negative, then the numbers must have opposite signs. Either the first number must be positive and the second number negative, or the first number is negative and the other number is positive. Why? Because if both were positive, then the answer would be greater than naught. And if both were negative, then the answer would also be greater than naught. So in other words, if we want to work out where the product of two numbers is negative, you have to have one number being negative and the other one be, being positive. Or they just have to have opposite signs, okay? So if you apply that to this graph over here, you know, let's start somewhere over here, right? Let's start at minus 5. What, what can you say about the y value of f of x at minus 5? It's negative, right? It's sort of down there. And the y value of g of x, it's also negative. So therefore, the product of the y values is going to be positive, And therefore, this condition is not true. But as we move along the x-axis, like I said, we're always putting our finger along the x-axis and we move until we get to minus 3. Look what happens at minus 3. At minus 3, the parabola's y value is 0, which means that the answer will be 0 because whenever you multiply by 0, it's 0. But as you move beyond minus 3, the parabola becomes positive, but the straight line graph is still negative, which means that the product will be negative until this point over here which we can give it a label, we can say that's C. Because after C, both the straight line graph and the parabola are positive, which means that their product will be positive. So it's only between A and C. Uh, actually, it's only between minus 3 and C. Between minus 3 and C. So if we just draw a line here, between minus 3 and C, that the that the product of the the parabola and the straight line graph will be negative because at between minus 3 and C, the parabola is positive and the straight line graph is negative. 
and you'll see that this continues until we get to the point 2. Okay, so if you just move our finger along the x-axis, we get to 2. 2 is when the parabola is naught, and then you notice as we move to the right of 2, the parabola is negative, and the straight line is positive, and this continues on forever and forever. So therefore, it will be along the x-axis towards positive infinity from the x value of 2. So therefore, your answer would be, x must be between a and c, okay, or x must be greater than 2. So do you see how all these questions, all they're just trying to do is to, they're basically asking you to test different x values and see if these conditions, are these statements true? That's all these questions are asking you. And it all starts with you putting your finger along the x-axis and asking yourself the question, is this statement true? It's as simple as that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hey guys, this is Ilias from Detonic. Just a reminder to keep on spreading the word, telling your friends about the organization. And I hope that you enjoyed this video.